Yelena Bolajic is a 24-year-old Serbian artist whose work was shortlisted for the prestigious BP Portrait Award. <laughs> this is Mira. The woman in the huge portrait is her mother, Groza, who died at age 94 just a few months ago. The three-meter-high pencil drawing is one of art collector Charles Saatchi's latest acquisitions. What causes viewers to want to gaze, to cry, to get up close and even touch is all part of Yelena's magic. portrait artist that doesn't fit what I'm doing I am depicting a human face I can't really look for that long a time at somebody's face if I don't really love that face I have to truly feel connected to it in order to spend eight months with it I simply randomly find people by encountering them absolutely by chance With Marie Therese, it was an absolute chance encounter. She, we were both in this museum, and she was passing in front of me, and I just, it was like a bell ringing above my head. You know, my God, like, this is the face, this is the face. I fall in love with their faces. It's like that. You don't know why you fall in love, right? I truly feel that I'm safe with them, and I feel that they hug me with their eyes. The first face I fell in love with was uh, Ishtok Kamen, one uh, person in nursing home in Brbas. And I saw him through the window, and he was looking straight into me. And I thought, I, I thought this is a person to draw and to draw and to draw, and I did so many drawings of him. He was marvelous, and such a face. He was the first person I fell in love with. Šta kažete? Evo tu baš, evo tu. Tu. Super. Hvala i okrenete se na ovu stranu. Hvala. Jelena still frequents the nursing home down the road in Verbas. Always searching for that magical face, that special connection that drives her to pick up her pencil and draw. When she finds it, she takes a photograph and leaves. The good thing as well is that I don't know these people most of the time. They're incognita to me. I have no idea what there is behind that face, really. I don't want to know because it will influence me. from a photograph lately. I used to have sitters, and but lately it's a photograph. I just have this surface, really, that I work with. It's the surface of a face, it's the skin. Those wrinkles really represent something that, like a time turned into shape. It becomes so unique. It's like, you know, like a fingerprint. She primes the canvas with a chalky wash, a mix of crushed stones and acrylic. Then she draws in pencil and charcoal, and then seals it all with another layer of wash, giving the work a depth, a skin. How I begin is by focusing on the central part of the painting, and it's most of the time it's the nose. And if I calculate the middle right, then everything will fit perfectly. That primer layer of establishing the main structure of the face, that's mostly done with just graphite. When I go much more elaborately into it, then I usually use charcoal. 
after I have established these basic things, I put the painting on the floor quite often and I, I don't know, I do with it what feels right. Such a mystery, human face. <laughs> it's such a mystery. Today, our ones to watch have come to the National Portrait Gallery to view their paintings together with their sitters for the first time. I've heard reports about it, and some say you look a bit sad, but I don't think I look sad. I think I just look... I don't know, it's thoughtful. I think I recognise myself most particularly in the eyes. I knew it was going to be good because the structure of the painting was good to start with, but then... After, you After that, city, it didn't go quite so well, it didn't did it? Go so well. <laughs> the implication is all of this character disappears mm. into that non-individuated space. You turned very grumpy. I did. The last time <laughs> you saw it, <laughs> I kicked oh, over the easel. And it kept the paint kept going on, and then I cut it off. I said, I think we should stop. Should we stop? <laughs> <laughs> In a way, I, it's like looking at my ghost. Mm. It's lovely. It's lovely. Very, very pleased. <laughs> very, oh, very pleased. Thanks. Back in Jonathan's studio, his hour with ballerina Tamara Rojo is coming to an end, and it's time to show her his progress. I've just made it start. Can we do kind of a look? Yeah. I mean, it's obviously going to kind of evolve a lot, <laughs> but it's a kind of it's a drawing really with paint. Yeah, I haven't really done justice to how interesting your eyes are. Pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> I, I do recognize myself in it, as in, I know that sometimes I look like that <laughs> at people. <laughs> when you go to a gallery, a museum, you always wonder who was this person and why, why did they choose to paint them? So mm. it would be quite fantastic if that happened to this painting. <laughs> The greatest portrait artists can penetrate the flesh and bones before them, with every brush or pencil stroke capturing something of the soul and offering a further dimension to the face within the frame. You can see a mini masterclass on portrait painting with Jonathan Yeo at our website at cnn.com slash ones to watch. CNN wants to watch in association with Cartier. This month on CNN Go. Feast on the flavors of Japan, from tempura to ramen. Mm. We're on a culinary journey through a country famed for its food. Take a bite. Go into the kitchen with the nation's masters, beyond what any guidebook will show you. CNN Go, Saturday on CNN, in association with Korean Air. CNC3. This time check is brought to you by Sunshine Granola Crunch Sashes. Sunshine cereals wake up to a better breakfast every day. Like a normal distribution. Uh, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm here with Ramsey and This is the morning brew. How are you today? It is a beautiful Wednesday morning, and this morning, as is customer, we're going to continue to follow all of the major stories affecting life in Trinidad and Tobago. But before we begin our first interview this morning, and before we check in with Akash Samru, uh, let's remind you why you should buy the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian this morning. The front page of the Guardian newspaper, and as you know, superstar Ato Bolden uh, on Aussie sex scandal. It's a fabrication uh, to follow friends, lead, and sue the media house in this uh, particular matter. And the story was blasted all over the internet yesterday. A second Tobago schoolgirl missing, and acting COP launches a secret station survey. Hmm. 
So uh, that's what's happening in the news this morning. Don't forget to pick up your Trinidad and Tobago Guardian uh, to get the response from Atchabulgan on all that is happening. But we're going to check in with Akash Sam, Ravni Maranthi soon. This is The Morning Brew. I'll see you after the news. Good morning, I am Akash Samaru and this is your morning news here on CNC3 and the TBC radio network. Former Trinidad and Tobago star Atto Bolgan is preparing to take legal action against an Australian newspaper following the publication of an article that alleges an extramarital affair involving him and an Australian senator. The Northern Territory News is of Australia alleged that Senator Nova Paris used taxpayers' funds to pay for Bolgan to travel to Australia to continue the affair. But Bolden issued a statement saying the article included gross fabrications. He said, quote, Now, Paris is a former training partner of mine and has been a friend for almost 20 years. My last trip to Australia almost five years ago was for the purpose of holding several youth clinics and it was a successful undertaking. The trip was co-organized by one of my now deceased colleagues at Athletics Australia. The article recently written by the Northern Territory News includes gross fabrications, end quote. In other news, Shigona's West MP Jack Warner is accusing Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa of being untruthful over the resumption of Parliament. Mr. Warner says there was no set date for Parliament to convene and believes if it wasn't for the opposition leader putting pressure on the government, the Parliament would remain dormant. I call her today. She was never even consulted, never told. The, the staff and the, and the Parliament don't want, want, want to wait. I asked them on Monday, the staff in Parliament did not know. Nobody in government knew until this morning when Parliament would have been called. And if you have to give Mr. Rowley one, Dr. Rowley one credit, so forcing Parliament to be called. Because ask yourself, those national issues, what part did you vote we play? What part did you play on Section 34? What part did you play on the Constitution Amendment Bill? The Chagoras West MP and ILP chairman was the guest speaker at the Port of Spain Rotary Club yesterday. Well, environmental activist Dr. Wayne Koblansing says he is not opposed to releasing his medical records to the Prime Minister, but he says only if a written request is made. The legitimacy of Dr. Wayne Koblansing's hunger strike has been questioned by some government ministers and members of the public who are skeptical about the length of his fast. Dr. Koblansing responded to calls for his medical records to be made public. He says that the Prime Minister wants access to his medical records to determine if he is in fact fasting, then she must make a written request to him. And only then will he authorize the hospital to release his medical information. He said he will not release the information to the media. And one of the men accused of murdering Extra Food CEO Vindra Naipaul Kuhlman in 2006 denies he was counting a large sum of money shortly after her kidnapping. One of the interrogation statements of Antonio Charles was read out to the jury yesterday, in which he also sought to distance himself from a firearm he was charged for. And that was your morning news here on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. We now take a quick break, then join Hema Ramki soon on The Morning Brew.
Lactogen Junior is the only growing up milk with a unique combination of the probiotic l comforties which helps to support a healthy digestive system and may reduce tummy upsets like constipation and vitamins and minerals to support healthy growth. Try Lactogen Junior Growing Up Milk today, specially suited for healthy children 12 to 36 months. Lactogen Junior, digestive comfort that shows. <laughs> Health Mobility Specialist Limited is the distributor of Bruno Independent Living Aids, manufacturer of products designed to enhance the lives of those challenged by limited mobility. Our indoor or outdoor stair lifts, or perhaps an interior or exterior residential vertical platform lift, will have you exploring your surroundings. Call us today. Attention all audit professionals. The Institute of Internal Auditors Trinidad and Tobago Chapter is hosting their 2014 workshop series on operational auditing and report writing skills, addressing stakeholders' concerns. This will be held from November 18th to 20th, 2014, and will be conducted by two esteemed IIA-trained facilitators. Venue, Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business. Time, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. For more information, please contact the IIA office at 625-5558 or 769-1671. Central Med Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Central Med Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure and cholesterol testing. Seaview Optical announces their 2015 Michael Kors and Coach promotions. With the purchase of all Michael Kors and Coach frames, get 25% off plus 50% off all Michael Kors and Coach sunglasses. Complete single vision lenses with frames at $299. Bifocal lenses with frame $479. Latest on all Cruzal Sapphire, Provencia, and Avance lenses. Seaview Optical, affordable eye care for everyone. Now it's real. Watch GNA Impact Wrestling every Thursday only on CNC3. The Morning Brew is brought to you in part by Wendy's. Good morning again, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Hamer Rampistoon, and this is The Morning Brew. How are you today? Uh, it is a beautiful Wednesday morning, and as you know, Wednesday is my favorite day of the week. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, uh, so you're halfway there. Uh, don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at CNC3TV or at Hamer underscore Rampistoon, hashtag TMB. Uh, we're also streaming live, or you can follow Akash at Akash Samaru, that is capital A and capital S, and also Carissa underscore Lee. Carissa is the producer of The Morning Brew to make sure and get the latest updates on uh, what's coming out uh, from the show also, we're streaming live, www.cnc3.co.tt. And uh, if you feel like sending us an email during the show, you know we do check our emails. Uh, you can send it to tmb at cnc3.co.tt. And we are, you can catch excerpts of the interviews on radio frequency 7.30 a.m. So if you're running out of your house this morning, uh, we're definitely keeping you connected. Uh, but this morning, our first interview will be via telephone with the PRO of the People's National Movement, Senator Faris Al-Rawi, with a brief interview with the Senator about the Prime Minister's statements yesterday, uh, she basically chastised Dr. Keith Rowley, saying that oh, they were fully aware that Parliament was going to be reopened. But Jack Warner is saying, uh, and he said at a Rotary meeting, that that is not so. Uh, so the controversy continues. Also, a little later, we will be speaking with Mariano Brown uh, about the situation with the oil prices and what are we going to do. Our sources tell us that Cabinet may be discussing this matter on Thursday. Um, as you know, we have uh, budgeted the oil price at 80 U.S. dollars a barrel. Currently, it's about 80 to 85 dollars. But uh, all of the international institutions that are charged with responsibility of forecasting, uh, they believe that it can bottom out at 72. And we're seeing the geopolitical warfare taking place. Uh, OPEC is now making its position known the shale glass gas situation in the U.S. So a lot of changes are taking place, and uh, we are just a player. A very small player and uh, we're also a victim in this situation but how is it impacting our revenue stream and how is it going to impact operations and today uh, in the midst of all of
of this. I understand that there's going to be uh, the oil and gas uh, that Expo is taking place today. And Kevin Ramrine, the Minister of Energy, will be addressing the conference. The Minister of Finance is not in the country, but uh, he is... Uh, looking and monitoring this situation so so much to discuss this morning but before we take our first break and before we begin our first interview for this morning uh, let's give you something to think about while you share a morning cup of coffee with us Trinidad and Tobago This one is an easy, very simple uh, thing to do today. Smile, it's free therapy. I'm gonna read that again for you. Smile, it's free therapy. Are you smiling today, Trinidad and Tobago? You know, so often we allow people to take away our smiles and sometimes you're lucky enough to have someone in your life that makes you smile. So whatever you're doing today, just keep smiling and remember that no matter what is happening, uh, you know, your smile is a free, it's the only free therapy that exists. And uh, why would you frown? It'll give you wrinkles eventually and kind of, you know, make everything else seem a little more damp or a little more dreary than it really is. So just keep smiling and save yourself the wrinkle cream a little later. We're going to take a very short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. This is The Morning Brew Trinidad and Tobago. Stay with us. Meat Melt Wednesdays at Ruby Tuesday. Buy one ribs or burger entree and get 50% off a second entree of equal or lesser value. Meat Melt Wednesdays gives you satisfaction guaranteed on every level. Rich, bold flavors to savor at great value and an all-round fun time. Check out Meat Melt Wednesdays from 5 to 11 p.m. at Ruby Tuesday. Ruby Tuesday, it's all good here. Sanjeevani for Life introduces Neurofactor Plus, an all-natural treatment for the entire central nervous system. Neurofactor Plus is used to treat Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, insomnia, neuropathy, high blood pressure, stroke, depression, stress, chronic body pains, and much more. Visit them at 441 Old Southern Main Road, Chase Village, Chaguanas, or call 665-5433. Sanjeevani for Life Ayurvedic and Body Care Clinic. Your health is your wealth. Woodville is clearing out one of its warehouses for good. This is the big one, baby. Don't miss it. Prices like never before. Warehouses must be cleared. Five-piece bedroom set from $5,995. And many more items priced to clear. Central Med Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Central Med Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure, and cholesterol testing. OGTT 2014 heralds in a new era in technological advancements in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. This three-day expo conference and debate presents an array of opportunities for forging alliances amongst local and foreign companies. From the 29th to the 31st October 2014 at the Center of Excellence, OGTT 2014 features local and internationally renowned exhibitors and speakers relative to the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. Register to become an exhibitor or attend at no cost. At Value Optical, you can get eyeglasses for $895 and designer frames at 25% off. Give your eyes style at the best price. You can even get digital HD lenses the next day. Advanced technology in quick time with service that's focused on you. Isn't it time you made your eyes happy? Call 800-2020 to schedule an appointment today. Value Optical, caring for your eyes. Welcome, my friend, Adam Tobago. I'm Hema Ram Timmel. Joining us on the telephone now, uh, we have the PRO of the People's National Movement, Senator Faris Arawi. Senator, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you and good morning to Trinidad and Tobago. Now, Senator, my first question to you. Uh, coming out of the PNM's convention, I know that Dr. Rowley uh, made several announcements. One of the major statements that he made uh, was the fact that uh, he 
felt as though the people's business was on hold, that parliament, uh, the business of the people were not, was not being addressed. But the prime minister, uh, following a meeting with Ola London, that is the head of the THA, she slammed the opposition leader, saying he was fully aware when parliament was supposed to be resumed, uh, saying that parliament was called out during the August vacation uh, to discuss the constitutional amendment bill. Uh, so everything was, was basically in the public domain. She accused him of misleading the population. Well, that just certainly isn't the case. First of all, let me put the facts upon the table. The Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago was not supposed to meet in the month of August pursuant to its specific and clear standing orders. Standing orders 13 and 14 of the Parliament specifically required that there was a recess. The Prime Minister called for that debate on the Constitutional Amendment Bill. We in the PNM had the opportunity not to go to Parliament and we could have stood on procedure, but the people's business is by far more important. The Prime Minister cannot point to, with all seriousness, a parliamentary legislative agenda. That does not exist. And there is no order paper in the Parliament. The first time Trinidad and Tobago became aware that the, that the Prime Minister even contemplated the Parliament was when she was compelled to respond to Dr. Rowley's complaint that the UNC government has fallen down on the job. Mm -hmm. So that is just simply untrue. As you're well aware, our members of parliament have been clamoring for debate in particular on burning legal issues. You need only look no further than Amory Brown's call for a debate on the preparedness for the Ebola situation mm -hmm. and the government's steadfast refusal to deal with it. So Madam Prime Minister, I think, was caught napping and has just come out doing as if there was something to be said. Now, it's interesting that opposite, the government's chief whip, Dr. Rudal Munilal, uh, said contrary to Dr. Rowley's claim, Parliament normally has a lull after the passing of the budget. And this was uh, required, this was required more than ever this year because of the introduction of the new standing orders, which saw exhaustive examination of budget 2015 by the Standing Finance Committee. He said it was not the government that was absent, that was absent but rather the opposition leader. According to Dr. Munilal, and I'm, I'm going to quote him verbatim here, I was appalled to read a statement attributed to the leader of the opposition because the PNM had complained in August and September that the parliamentary agenda was too oppressive, Munilal told uh, the newspaper at that time. At one stage when Parliament sat for one straight week, they complained that the House was meeting too, too frequently. Did the PNM actually indeed uh, level any sort of complaints or make any sort of complaints, uh, Senator? I don't think that Dr. Murilal is a man that could be taken seriously on anything at all. I mean, I, I'm sorry to, 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 to say this, but he resides very comfortably in constant humor. Mm -hmm. The fact is the PNM complained, as it should have, on behalf of the citizens, that the constitutional amendment bill was brought in breach of the standing orders, and there was no consultation. And we complained because people had gone about in setting their vacation agenda because the standing orders said we would be on vacation. Mm -hmm. To say that we complained in August is true. We complained because people were off on their vacation and there was a critical piece of legislation brought out of the blue with no consultation. Munilal is, is a gentleman that cannot point to the substance of a real argument. He's a master of distraction. I mean, perhaps magic would be an, uh, an alternative um, career for this gentleman. I mean, what is he speaking about? I, we're I, talking about the people's business, and we're talking about this government having the need to come to Parliament. We have an, a situation to deal with, including Ebola. We have a preparedness where the United Kingdom has written to Trinidad and Tobago, we've said in the Parliament, threatening visa restrictions on Trinidad and Tobago because our border and security remains in such a terrible form of surveillance and scrutiny. What is Munilal talking about? Did the opposition ever use the term that the parliamentary agenda was too oppressive? Where did that come from? Because I'm quoting I, ex listen, exactly I what... accept nothing that Rudal Munilal says. I don't believe a word he says, and he is very quick to say things off of the cuff. I mean, to tell you the truth, Hema, this conversation, to use valuable airtime this morning, mm. to, to condescend, to justify something Murila said off the cuff, where you can't even point to the facts of a situation, is, in my opinion, 
a waste of time. I'm sure you and I have much more important things to talk about. No, I just want to ask one thing again out, out of this, and this is from the Prime Minister's statement, because I know with a number of other issues I want to talk about, including the PNM Convention. Uh, Pasad Bissessa, recall that when the Parliament did not sit for eight months, an apparent reference uh, to the stalemate in the 1818 situation in 2001, and she said no such comment was made by the Honourable Leader of the Opposition then. Parliament has been out for several weeks, having the workload that we had in August, which is traditionally a month of recess. She noted that Parliament had sat in August and in September, and the Senate had only adjourned on October 1st, adding Parliament has sat for long days and nights in August and September to debate. Therefore, we felt it prudent, and I'm quoting exactly what she said, we felt it prudent that it was always understood that we will resume in November. Was it always understood that they make that clear? I see Jack Warner saying he was unaware that Parliament was going to be resumed in November. That is an inveterate untruth. And let me put the Prime Minister in the proper position. Of course the Parliament did not meet in the 1818 situation because of two factors. Number one, a Parliament cannot sit to pass legislation where there is no clear parliamentary majority. So it is, it is obtuse to say that you will sit in an 1818 scenario and someone should complain about it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the, the installation of a government for the period of one year in that 1818 tie meant that there was already a setting for, a, for an election to be called a year later. So the prime minister is holding on to absolute nonsense to justify the fact that her government has fallen asleep on the job. I mean, let's get this straight. The other issue is you've heard it now from Mr. Warner as well. Where is the evidence that the Parliament was meeting? But Hema, we've now spent five minutes talking about respectfully something that really is not a burning issue in Trinidad and Tobago. No, speaking the about government that. cannot explain the fact that it has not called the Parliament and it has been caught napping on the people's business. No, Full I stop. I do want to ask you a little bit about the convention, Senator, because I know uh, you have a very busy day as well. You know, I had Rodney Charles on set on Monday. And he basically, and a lot of, uh, I read, uh, you know, a lot of quip, uh, quip whips and a lot of fatigue on the internet about the announcements made. Uh, looking at the PNM having its convention, and obviously you see the shift in the PNM policy. Uh, I was held at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. A lot of uh, announcements were made. We, you dealt specifically with crime. But Dr. Rowley is saying like in two weeks' time that there will be another convention and a lot of policy positions will be articulated. Now, Dr. Rod, uh, Rodney Charles, sorry, uh, has said that well, it's yet another example that the fact that the PNM has no policy and that it's simply a sort of amended version of Vision 2020. Who is Rodney Charles? <laughs> Senator, to answer the question. Uh, looking at the yeah, fact I'm, that... I'm putting, it, I'm putting it into the context, first of all. Rodney Charles is an unelected uh, member of the UNC, not even a person who occupies an official capacity. That is remarkable because the UNC has failed to have internal elections, which were due. You need only ask Mr. Pandey about the consequence of that. The next position is this. You're looking at news clips right now of over 700 delegates from the People's National Movement sitting down in serious business. This does not resemble a UNC wine and jam uh, occasion or a party atmosphere, a stage or position. This is about policy. This is this going on to the 60th year of the PNM's existence. Mr. Charles has obviously got to manage the crippling fear that he feels in seeing the PNM sit down almost a year before an election, if you were to accept what the Prime Minister says, to work on its statements of policy in day one of its convention. This is the same Charles who is witnessing the PNM roll out candidate after candidate onto the national community for potential selection by the electorate. I mean, I am sure that the man is crippled by fear. I can understand that. He's, he's a member of a party that has not had any form of election internally. They cannot point a single statement of policy of their own. And so the best way for them to appear as if they have a grip on the situation is to try and raise some form of feeble, distracting um, attack upon the PNM. Now, I want to ask we in the PNM will continue to focus upon our production of philosophy, of policy, 
and of people. And we're serious about putting ourselves before the nation to ask the population to judge us upon the merit of the issues which we bring to the table and the policies which we propose as solutions to those issues. And we are also asking the population to consider the personalities that we offer for the time being, people being personalities that change over the political landscape over time. We as current officers of the PNM, duly elected in a very vibrant process, are serious about winning this next election. Now, you so, know one of the questions, Sorry. and I know that crime are featured uh, predominantly in terms of the discussions held at the convention, and uh, the PNM giving their rolling out and addressing what they say, Dr. Rowley saying it's a serious problem in our country. Uh, but when I spoke to uh, to Mr. Charles, he says, well, the PNM has no track record when it comes to crime. In fact, he said, if given another chance, the government will further reduce crime. He said, according uh, to the data, and they, they, they're using this to back their campaign, that every time the PNM was in power, that there was an increase or a spike in the crime situation. Situation. How do you respond to that, Senator? Well, Mr. Charles, of course, can focus on what he wishes to focus on. What I can tell you is that the PNM certainly can point a track record where the detection and conviction rate, which is the material marker to be observed, was up to 35% as it relates, for instance, to homicide, 100% as it related to kidnapping for ransom. The detection and conviction rate right now resides between three to 4% in Trinidad and Tobago. So I don't know what Mr. Charles is talking about. And there's something very interesting to observe, Hema. You will notice that this PNM's current incarnation, its policy, has been a very supportive one as it relates to national security concerns. In particular, you will note that this PNM incarnation can show the people of Trinidad and Tobago active support in a bipartisan way for issues of crime. We are the only opposition in Trinidad and Tobago's history to sit down with a, a sitting government to produce point plans for the government and to work in joint select committee to come up with legislation for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. That has never happened in Trinidad and Tobago's history. Do you regret when doing it, Senator? Out, do you regret working sorry. with Do you regret working with the government to solve crime not, if you're not, seeing not, not at all, not at all. I can say that it has been an absolute pleasure to work for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And the fact is that we are the only opposition that can point. See, BMI, I don't know if people understand that in the Senate we have supported in areas where we caused reform to legislation that was brought to the parliament. We have supported 93% of the legislation brought to the parliament. A lot of it had serious problems, and we fixed it on the parliament floor, sometimes with the government kicking and screaming, largely because we had the support of the independent senators agreeing with our issues that we had identified. But the fact is, unlike the UNC, which resulted in Trinidad and Tobago having legacy gifts like this ridiculous mechanism to appoint a commissioner of police, that is a UNC product brought about almost in shotgun circumstances where they insisted upon making ridiculous amendments to the law if the law was to achieve a two-thirds support, a three-fifths majority in the parliament for passage. But we, are, we have distinguished ourselves in the best interest of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And of course not, we don't regret pushing the personal agenda of every citizen of this country in wanting crime to be dealt with. This government has failed miserably to address one of the most serious issues in Trinidad and Tobago, and that is crime. Now, I want to ask one more question about the convention before I talk a little bit about the campaign 2015. Uh, some of the policy positions, what are we expected to hear in two weeks' time, Senator? Are you going to say uh, your position? I know that we have spoken about uh, the, the uh, LGBT community. We've, look at, we've spoken about religion, equality. What are some of the things that we will hear coming out of the PNM in two weeks' time as it relates to this policy document? Sure. In two weeks' time, we're going to have day two, November 16th. We had day one of our convention where there were discussion papers on the floor, very much with polar positions to spark very lively debate. We had 14 areas of division in our convention. And it, in fact, crime was just one of those 14 areas, national security and crime. Coming out of that, our policy prescriptions are now considered based upon what the delegates had to say. Remember, 
these 700 people that attended represent each of the party structures in a larger sense. And there's a dynamic discussion that goes on between the delegates and the political leadership. And then a distillation of ideas comes out of that. Two weeks from now, there's a continuation of that exercise on the convention floor where resolutions and motions are put on the convention floor and they're considered again. Coming out of convention, the PNM will be able to crystallize its policy for statement in manifesto. So you're going to see the emergence of the policy of the PNM as it will be distilled in a manifesto as we head towards election. So it's very much a work in progress. The PNM's political structure to get to a statement of policy has been one which has been observed for going on to nearly 60 years. Mm -hmm. And our membership, which is now bursting at the seams following our one man, one vote exercise, which deepened the democracy of the PNM down to, for the purposes of election of a political leader and certain officers, did not abandon our delegate system upon which the party has very successfully operated. So you're going to, to answer your question, get policy prescriptions coming out of the convention, which would then move into what our manifesto documentation will look like. But this is the required mechanism for us to get the party support for positions. That's why we're able to complain legitimately. For instance, as we did in the month of August, where we said the government had plucked out of the ether this whole concept of runoffs and, and that supposed constitutional reform which happened. We're able to digest and demonstrate to people where our positions come from after process of consultation. So there's a process to go through, and we're very proud of it, and the population can look forward to coming out of the convention. Our next step will be manifesto material and policy articulation. Now, I want to ask one final question to you, Senator, before we wrap this interview. Uh, coming out of the, P uh, of the UNC camp and the partnership camp over the last couple interviews that I've done with government officials, uh, you get the sense that this race is going to be positioned as a personality race, and this is a 2015 election, uh, between who you like more, really, the likability factor between Kamala Prasad Bissessa and Dr. Keith Rowley, saying, well, it's two leaders. Who do you think is going to be better? Who do you think you like more? If it comes down to that, are you concerned that Dr. Rowley may not fare as well? You are parroting the words of the same gentleman who has no portfolio, Mr. Rodney Charles. He would love it if that was the case. I'm very happy for him to consider um, that as reality, much as the UNC considers everything else in this country to be reality. Their reality is there's no crime. Their reality is the $300 million that they're spending on advertising is not annoying to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, let alone a waste of people's money. The fact is that the PNM is very confident of its leader, Dr. Rowley. We have uh, no difficulties um, that the UNC may think exists. We're very confident that Dr. Rowley is the right person for the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. But, Hema, I don't need to swing that song too far ahead. The population is going to decide it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our philosophy is, and our process is, that the PNM will be judged upon its philosophy, its policy, its process, and its people. Dr. Rowley is a very serious gentleman. Perhaps um, some people trade upon how serious he is upon issues. He has been a champion for democracy in Trinidad and Tobago, and he's somebody that the PNM backs 100%. The popularity contest and beauty show that the Prime Minister is running on her camp, so be it. She's entitled to deal with that. She will deal with her campaign, and but we will deal with ours, but we're very confident of our position. But she still remains a very popular leader, according to all polls. You, you, you know what the anomaly of that situation is and how the UNC trades it off? We have now come to accept a line in Trinidad and Tobago that the Prime Minister is supposedly a popular Prime Minister on an unpopular government. Let's see how that works for the UNC.
Senator, thanks so much for joining us this morning to clarify some of the positions adopted at the convention, what we can expect in two weeks' time, and responding the official opposition position on the parliamentary term, saying, well, the, the government has been caught napping. Uh, Dr. Ruda Almunila lashing out of the opposition, saying, well, no, it's not that way. Uh, but Jack Warner also entering the fray there, saying that he doesn't know where the state came out of. Uh, we take a very short break. We're going to check in with Judy Canai to find out what's happening in the world of business. When we come back, Mariano Brown joins us on set. Stay with us. Business Watch is brought to you by Trafalgar Motors, distributors of Jaguar and Land Rover. A lot has changed since McEnany Motors sold its first Ford model in Trinidad and Tobago almost a century ago. Today, this antique model represents a 95-year journey that started in 1919. And as McEnany Motors prepares to embark on another 95 years of service, it intends to do so in style. On Saturday, it opened a new state-of-the-art showroom at the corner of Charles and Francis Streets in Port of Spain. General Manager of the Caribbean and Central America region of Ford International, Michael O'Brien, says Ford's future is a bright one. says the Ford brand has revolutionized the automobile industry. He's promising new models will be introduced to the local market within the next year. Transport Minister Stephen Cady has congratulated the Ansem Macau Group for what he calls another significant investment. McEnany Motors is a division of the Ansem Macau Group of Companies. Uh, And Deputy Chairman of Ansem Mikhail, David Sabga, says he would like to see the automotive sector continue to grow and benefit from similar investments. Some of Ford's hottest sellers include the Ford Ranger, the Focus, and the Fiesta. The Ansem Macau Group invested $30 million on this new showroom. Judy Kanhai, CNC3 Business Watch. Business Watch was brought to you by Trafalgar Motors, distributors of Jaguar and Land Rover. Rover Evoque, $690,000, which includes insurance, maintenance, warranty, and financing with our in-one package. Hi, I'm Shivana. When I heard the news from my school teacher, I was shocked beyond words. None of this would have been possible without God, my parents and family, all my hardworking teachers, and of course with the Guardian SCA practice tests. I used that every Wednesday since I was in Standard 4 and made sure I checked the results on the Friday. Parents, I would encourage you strongly to get the Guardian SCA every Wednesday for your child and help them achieve their true potential. The SCA practice test, free in your Wednesday Guardian. Enjoy zero down payment, zero interest for 12 months, zero installments for up to 60 days, zero risk with up to three years warranty, plus you get our best price guarantee. And with up to 36 months to pay, you can choose the plan that's right for you. We got this for zero. We got this for zero. We got this for zero. Standard, never beaten on quality. Dig into the deliciously sophisticated taste of Wendy's with our new smoked Gouda chicken, layered with flavors of caramelized onion sauce and Dijon aioli. 
all atop a buttery brioche bun. It's time to bring your taste buds to attention with our new smoked Gouda on brioche. Something so Gouda is only around for a limited time. So try one today. Wendy's, now that's better. Available at all locations nationwide. Debt Recovery and Administrative Services Limited, the leader in debt collections for over 15 years. Our advanced technological approach continues to make us number one. Call or visit us online for more information. Because when things don't go as planned, we are here to keep you afloat. Central Med Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Central Med Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose pressure and cholesterol testing. Look out every weekday on Crime Watch. You can now double your winnings. Double your winnings. In the Guardian Crime Watch Lucky Key promotion. Look for your Lucky Key at the back of the Guardian each day. Watch Crime Watch at 6 p.m. on CNT3 to find out if you have the Lucky Key. You now have a chance to double your winnings. Remember to buy your Guardian and watch Crime Watch at 6 p.m. on CNT3 to find out if you have the Lucky Key for a chance to double your winnings. Exclusively on Crime Watch on CNT3. See the Guardian for details. Detail, 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 detail. Welcome back to Nada Tobago. And yes, my producer Chris is always keeping me on my feet this morning, kind of correcting me all the time. Uh, but we're going to check in with a story now from our newscast. And as you know, Mariana Brown joins us in a couple of seconds to talk about the falling oil prices and what does it mean for Trinidad and Tobago. Almost 50% of the country's GDP is generated from the energy sector, specifically oil prices, while we boast of being a, ga a major gas producer. Well, you know, in the world scale, we're not. Uh, but we do generate a significant quantity of activity. Uh, from the gas uh, generating and gas activity and, and the, the uh, downward or uh, the value chain of, of producing gas and uh, that process. But the bulk of the revenue still comes from oil production, which is on the decline. It's bottom out at 80,000 barrels per day. Uh, and also with declining oil prices that now reached $80 and our budget is, is predicated on 80 US dollar uh, per barrel figure what does that mean we're going to share with you a story from our newscast and then we will start our conversation with mariana brown stay with us business watch is brought to you by bmw on monday morning the price of west texas intermediate crude oil dropped below us 80 dollars a barrel the second time in less than two weeks international analysts describe it as a dramatic fall in oil prices at one point, it was trading at U.S. $79.59. At the end of trading for the day, it closed at $80.73. Now one of the world's largest investment banks, Goldman Sachs, is forecasting that oil prices could drop to $75 and $70 U.S. dollars in the first and second quarters of next year. The fall in oil prices has been linked to a rise in supply and weak demand. But if this dip in the oil price is prolonged, energy companies will have to brace for lower revenues. State-owned refinery Petrotrin tells CNC3 Business Watch that its gross revenue will fall by the same amount that the price of oil has fallen. Oil prices have dropped by 25% since June. Once the price of oil starts falling, energy companies start cutting back on their costs. Petrotrin is admitting that it will cut costs and all areas of expenditure will be carefully analyzed and decisions will be based on the critical nature of the various areas of expenditure. The state-owned oil company says the low oil price will also result in reduced taxes paid to the government. All consuming countries will benefit from this drastic drop in oil prices as these countries spend a significant amount of money on fuel subsidies. Indonesia, for instance, spends 20% of public spending on fuel subsidies and for India, it's 14% of its expenditure. India announced earlier this month that it was removing its diesel subsidies. But it's not welcome news for all producing countries like Trinidad and Tobago, as it will not enjoy windfall revenues from a higher oil price. The government had projected $22 billion in oil revenue for the 2015 budget from an oil price of US $80 a barrel. Judy Kanhai, CNC3 Business Watch. 
Uh, welcome back to Adam Tobago. What we're going to do at this time is just open our phone lines for a little bit and uh, get your thoughts on all that is happening in the country. 627-865-8624-8721. Uh, the parliament is expected to res be resumed uh, in the first week of November. The prime minister is saying that the business of the people continues uh, each day. The opposition is saying that the government has launched a PR campaign uh, to sell itself for the 2015 general elections. As you know, according to the broadcast code, uh, the broadcast rules, sorry, we don't have broadcast code in Trinidad and Spago, but uh, according to the regulations governing the industry, government is allocated a specific amount of time every single day so obviously the government is sort of utilizing that six two seven eight six five eight six two four eight seven two one our phone lines are open we just have time for a couple of calls this morning so we're hoping to hear your thoughts now remember quick house rules when you're calling please mute your television set and listen on your telephone and simply identify where you're calling from and uh, please be respectful to the rest of our viewers we have a call on the line hello good morning hello okay thank you hello good morning good morning um it's not about the the victim and the 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 cause and the whole controversy. You know, that but as it has, for example, deep in south there is a oil sand quarry. They are passing the highway direct in the oil sand quarry and it is sinking. So these are issues they it never even come out in the public forum. So if it's the minister or whoever to come and investigate these things, right? They just give people contracts and then watch in. Uh, that part, the history, after sure. Rosilla coming down, they, 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 they're doing some excavation where they find gas, and the whole wide area, the whole earth dropped about three feet in the ground. Who knows what underneath it? And these people are continuing the work. So when they have it down, suppose that is an excavation thing and it collapsed. So, like, you know, it's not like that could be thing is still that part of the highway is fucking whatever. It has major things, and these Brazilian and them they just continuing to do their job. And, it's not nobody overseeing them. Sure, thank, thank you. So, you. Thanks so much, caller. 627-8658-624-872. We have another call on the line. Hello, good morning. Oh, we lost that call. 627-8658-624-8721. Uh, our phone lines are open. We just have time for a few calls this morning uh, while we await the arrival of our guest. Uh, and please, when you're calling in, please listen on your telephone and not on your television set. Also, another major story, uh, Bolden on the Aussie sex scandal. It's all a fabrication. Let's take another caller. Hello, good morning. Morning, Ema. Hi, good morning. Ema, I was in the program this morning, and I heard um, Al Fari. Senator um, Al-Rawi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, al Rawi talking about um, the, the set date for Parliament to begin again with the second or something like that. But Mr. Jack Warner said last night when he called the, 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 the chief whip of the opposition, she knew nothing about that date. Mm -hmm. He called Parliament. Parliament knew nothing about the date. I think you all um, should investigate that and call Parliament and find if there was a date set for sure. you. Um, convener of Parliament. Sure, thank you so much, Paula. 627-865-8624-721. Our phone lines are open. Uh, we are inviting your calls. Uh, the other major stories, second Tobago schoolgirl missing. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning to you, Eva. Hi, good morning. What would you like to share with us? My problem is this. With the falling oil prices, mm. I am hearing we have this government is considering giving Antigua $12 million, whether it is U.S. or T.T., to build a car park. And we see we have a couple right opposite the president's house here, catching the hand, mm. Auckland Nenon. So I can understand how they could be doing this. One time they worked at an ATM machine, but now they want to run money free to Antigua. We don't have that kind of money right now. We don't know what is the situation. Sure. Thank you so much, Paula. Thanks so much for sharing. We have time for one final call before we close up this segment. Oh, we're going to take a very short break, and when we come back, we are begin going to begin our conversation with Mariano Brown today with us. OGTT 2014 heralds in a new era in technological advancements in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. This three-day expo conference and debate presents an array of opportunities for forging alliances amongst local and foreign companies. From the 29th to the 31st October 2014 at the Center of Excellence, OGTT 2014 features local and internationally renowned exhibitors and speakers relative to the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. Register to become an exhibitor or attend at no cost.
bike is out quick. Don't throw it out. We go get fixed with materials from Radical Trading. Come, let me show you. In here, we have car real Porsche, man. Radical Trading, they have materials for vehicle, too. Them have everything, man. Furniture material, car covering, waterproofing for your boat. They go make everything look new. Well, I fix in my furniture and my whole house, too. Help me put the furniture back inside, man. Me and my big mouth. I wonder if Radica had anything to cover mouth. Radica Trading, Port of Spain, Chaguanas and San Fernando. I thought this was supposed to be a party. They forget the music. Seriously? Digital data is like having the fastest man in the world save you from party disasters. Sign up for a Digital Data plan today. Digital. Central Med Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Central Med Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure, and cholesterol testing. CV Optical announces their 2015 Michael Kors and Coach promotions. With the purchase of all Michael Kors and Coach frames, get 25% off plus 50% off all Michael Kors and Coach sunglasses. Complete single vision lenses with frames at $299. Bifocal lenses with frame $479. Latest on all Cruzal, Sapphire, Provencia and Avance lenses. CV Optical, affordable eye care for everyone. Welcome back to Rundal and Tobago. I'm Hema Ranke soon, and this is The Morning Brew. And joining us on the set now, Mariano Brown. He is a former minister in the Ministry of Finance, and today we're talking about the falling oil prices. Sources say the Cabinet is expected to discuss this matter on Thursday. Should we be worried? Good morning, Mr. Brown. Um, not really. It does have some effect on Trinidad and Tobago. But Trinidad and Tobago exports approximately somewhere between 700 to 800,000 barrel equivalents of of oil, and I say barrel equivalence because our major export is not oil, it's gas. Mm -hmm. So if you say that we, exp we are producing about 80,000 barrels, essentially 90% of what we export in alternative forms, in the form of LNG, in the form of ammonia, urea, is gas. Mm -hmm. So that the falling oil prices won't affect the country as a whole negatively. It will have some significance for Petrotrin. What are the implications on Petrotrin? Because, you know, my fr before we get into Petrotrin, how it impacts uh, Petrotrin, which is a major player and our, mm. ma our flagship in the, the, that part of the business. Um, the revenue stream, a lot of people were concerned about that as well. Should well, we be concerned about it? Well, Petrotrin is a refiner. And unfortunately, its cash flow has already been badly affected. And its cash flow is badly affected because of the subsidy. Effectively, Petrotrin pays the subsidy and waits for government to get it back. <laughs> so to the extent to which oil prices fall, um, it reduces Petrotrin's upfront cash requirement. And to that extent, it helps Petrotrin. But Petrotrin has a number of pro question problems at the moment. And Petrotrin is primarily a refiner with land assets which are old, so that it has all different kinds of maintenance issues, which we've only now begun to see. They're actually now reaching the public domain. And the second issue, um, is that it has had it has made a number of bad investment choices which has affected its cash flow negatively mm -hmm. so there are critical issues for petrotrade in terms of its survives from a cash flow perspective now if we look at uh, you know a lot of people were forecasting gloom and doom oil price it, the budget is predicated on an 80 US dollar per barrel uh, figure is that something that we should also be worried about well, since it's so close now not really because as I said, the majority of the oil revenue actually comes from, uh, sorry, but, the majority of our energy sector yeah. revenue actually comes from natural gas. So it's, it's not too much. Um, there's some wriggle room. The prices are likely to fall. It has a lot more to do with global demand and supply conditions, as well as, if you want, geopolitics. Mm -hmm. And at the same token, um, Saudi Arabia's position. But the benefit to Trinidad of falling international oil prices in real terms is that it reduces the cost of the subsidy. Mm -hmm. So for example, it slashes the price of the cost of the subsidy by approximately 
um, 25 percent, roughly, roughly. So that's a good thing. It's if good I can listen, if I listen to Nolly Mons. Uh, understanding of it is that that's not a good thing that, is it not? that's a good thing because it means effectively it gives about a billion dollars more in terms of disposable government revenue mm -hmm. um, that could be spent on other things so that's not a bad thing that's a good thing for all of the all of the countries that have subsidies um, falling international oil prices are useful because it reduces the budgetary impact of those subsidies now, you t I'll talk about the impact on Petrotrain. What are some of the major decisions that they will have to make in the short term and medium term? Oh, gosh, Petrotrain has so many decisions. <laughs> it's, 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 a real, it's a business case issue. It's a business case. And Petrotrain has to deal with it. You see, because we think of Petrotrain as being in the oil industry. Petrotrain is in a very, if you want, narrow segment of the oil industry. It's a refiner. Right? And it refines largely for Trinidad and Tobago. And some of the previous investment decisions are the correct one because internationally we are not even meeting our own domestic standard for diesel fuel so that there are a number of issues that petrogen has had to face the point is that from an organization point of view from a management perspective we haven't done the upgrades and we haven't done them well so they're not working in sequence mm -hmm. so we have a number of plans at the moment that are not functioning if you want efficiently or an optimum so that Petrotrain has business issues. You have to separate that out from, from pricing. That's, that has nothing to be priced. <laughs> now, if they had to make those decisions, then it's a separate issue from pricing. So obviously the maintenance, the quality, the management decisions, uh, and looking at the fact that while the government is benefiting from the reduction in the subsidy, you know, what does it mean for Petrotrain? Because Petrotrain obviously, uh, even though they depend on government, we get a lot of revenue from them as well. Well, Petrotrain is in, in one of those difficult situations. It's a mature company. You have to remember how Petrotrain was formed. It was formed from the purchase of BP assets when BP was looking to go. In other words, the, the fields were not as efficient, weren't as rich. Then we find ourselves, um, we bought Shell when Shell was leaving. We bought ourselves Texaco when Texaco was leaving. We have to do two refinery upgrades and we have all these land assets. Now, the problem with the land assets is that the, if you want, they're producing heavy crudes, but if you want, at marginal quantities. So it's, it, that's not a real core business of Petrotrin. So the real effect of those land assets is a drag on its cash flow. It really needs to concentrate on refining operations. And that's a, that's a critical issue in terms of where Petrotrin is. So that's why I'm saying it's a business case issue. So Do you think all the players or the major players in the energy sector are they uh, are getting a little cautious because we're also looking at uh, falling oil production? Uh, what do you think they are now considering and on, as a result of the international developments? Well, the real problem with international developments is what is the knock-on effect in terms of what we would consider to be complementary goods. Um, ammonia, urea can be produced by in a number of different methodologies. We produce it from natural gas. And you sometimes tend to have a pricing effect. And when I say a price effect, um, to the extent to which there's some complementarity, you would find the prices of our petrochemical exports could fall. Mm -hmm. And they've been reasonably robust. Now, that could have an effect on us. And that could have an effect in terms of the attractiveness of the sector. And already the sector has difficulties in terms of these euphemisms, gas, to, gas curtailments. Are we meeting our gas production requirements? That's that's another well, that's ball a game. challenge. That's, that's another ball game. Yeah. yeah. So those are those are the kinds of issues, but those are, if you want, strategic policy decisions from a business perspective that are medium or long term because you can't fix that now. Well, if I listen to you, Mr. Brown, I would not be worried at all about the developments on the international market. With regard to oil pricing, no. With respect to the possibility that it could affect the prices of our um, petrochemical sector, yes. Okay, and what do you think? Uh, how do we measure the impact, or when will we start feeling the effects of whatever may happen there? Well, these are all short term, all right? Short term. There are supply and demand conditions. Um, essentially, what you call it, the world recovery is slow. Um, the Asian market is its rate of growth, in particular China, is substantially down. So the demand for primary commodities is down. And you would find that it is affecting everything. The price of iron ore, 
the price of aluminum, the price of copper, the price of international food, all of those things are not under the same pressure. So prices are falling. Mm -hmm. The likelihood is that the prices of petrochemicals could fall in sympathy. Now that would have an effect on us. I think we're going to begin to see that reasonably shortly. We're going to begin to see that reasonably short. We're going to check in with Akash Samu for the 7 o'clock newscast. And when we come back, we have a few minutes again with Mariano Brown as we look at the performance of the energy sector, uh, saying that we don't have to be concerned about the falling crude oil prices in terms of that aspect of it, but they will have a knock-on effect on some other areas which we should uh, begin to monitor. Let's check in with Akash Samaru. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Akash Chisamaru and this is your morning news here on CNC3 and the TBC radio network. Another teenage girl has gone missing in Tobago. 14-year-old Chanel Forbes of Form 2 in of Mason Hall Secondary School was last seen on Monday morning. Her mother, Denise Tobias, says her daughter does not usually go out and she is aware of the friends her daughter keeps. Ms. Tobias tells CNC3 of the last interaction she had with Chanel before she went missing. Everything was going good as normal. We had a good weekend. Sunday night, everybody was jolly. You know, Monday morning, I wake up as usual, 5.30. She gets up, she bathes, change her clothes. When she finished put on she clothes, she called me and tell me, Mom, it's 6.23, I'm leaving now. Mm -hmm. I asked her, was it something for me? She did it. When she left, I told her, I said, pushing me down, you're going out. She was in her full uniform, her hair was in one. And that was the last. Police say they have no leads yet and are now probing her disappearance. In addition to 12-year-old Shalise de Gale, who also went missing, she is also a Form 2 student from the same school. Anyone with information is asked to call 289-1315 or 332-5417. Now the news, Petrotrin says operations at Trinma have resumed after its marine base facility was deemed safe following reports of a gas leak on Monday. On Monday, workers evacuated the compound after workers reported smelling a foul scent. Petrotrin says air quality tests were conducted on Monday and Tuesday and just found that the atmosphere was within the recommended industry standard. Petrotrin adds that it showed a zero reading and no indication of odors. It says operations have resumed as of today. Well, former Trinidad and Tobago athletic star Joe Bolden is preparing to take legal action against an Australian newspaper following the publication of an article that alleges an extramarital affair involving him and an Australian senator. The Northern Territory News of Australia alleged that Senator Nova Paris used taxpayers' funds to pay for Bolden to travel to Australia to continue the affair. But Bolden issued a statement saying the article included gross fabrications. He says, quote, Nova Paris is a former training partner of mine and has been a friend for almost 20 years. My last trip to Australia almost five years ago was for the purpose of holding several youth clinics and it was a successful undertaking. The trip was co-organized by one of my now deceased colleagues at Athletics Australia. The article recently written by the Northern Territory News includes gross fabrications, end quote. And uh, Shigonis West MP Jack Warner is accusing Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa of being untruthful over the resumption of Parliament. Mr. Warner says there was no set date for Parliament to convene and believes if it wasn't for the opposition leader putting pressure on the government, the Parliament would remain dormant. The chief whip, Nadine MacDonald, I called her today. She was never even consulted, never told. The, the staff at the, at the Parliament don't want, want to wear. I asked them on Monday. The staff in Parliament did not know. Nobody in government knew until this morning when Parliament would have been called. And if you have to give Mr. Rowley one, Dr. Rowley one credit, so forcing Parliament to be called. Because ask yourself, those national issues, what part did you vote we play? What part did you play on Section 34? What part did you play on the Constitution Amendment Bill? And that was your 7 a.m. news on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. Let's now take a quick break, then join him around Kisuna in the morning brew. <laughs>
numerous publications and experts confirm that inflammation is the root cause of illness and disease. Get rid of your pain with Omega XL, the all-natural anti-inflammatory that has more omega-3s than any product you can find in Trinidad and Tobago, except no substitutes. Over 25 years of clinical studies have proven Omega XL has far greater benefits than any fish oil at putting an end to your pain once and for all. Beware of the imposters claiming to offer the most powdered milligrams of omega-3s per bottle, which may contain dangerous fillers. Don't be fooled by fast-talking pitchmen that do not have the clinical studies to back up their claims. Omega XL is fully supported by actual physicians, not just pharmacists. There is no powdered product on the shelves today that can compete with Omega XL's more than 30 complex free-form fatty acids for fighting and putting an end to your neck, back, asthma, and arthritis pain caused by heart disease, diabetes, and so much more. Omega XL is a one-of-a-kind, powerful anti-inflammatory that is second to none when it comes to defeating your chronic inflammatory pain. Finally, put an end to your pain once and for all. Accept no substitutes. Take control of your pain by getting your Omega XL today. Visit your local pharmacy or health food stores to get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Omega XL is in no way affiliated with the SureCure product in Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago Hotspots Magazine is your guide for everything Tobago. Find the best hotels, fantastic restaurants, ideal shopping locations, and event schedules. We also show you the gorgeous beaches, romantic locations, and much more. Get your exclusive Tobago Hotspots Magazine every second Saturday each month in your Guardian. Attention all caterers, wholesalers, and retailers. Beaver Distributors Limited introduces our brand new Styrofoam products. Low prices on our superior brand personal care items, cleaning products, paper products, and our wholesale sizes of food items. Come in today at Beaver Distributors Limited. Superior quality at superior low prices. Seaview Optical announces their 2015 Michael Kors and Coach promotions. With the purchase of all Michael Kors and Coach frames, get 25% off plus 50% off all Michael Kors and Coach sunglasses. Complete single vision lenses with frames at $299. Bifocal lenses with frame $479. Latest on all Cruzal, Sapphire, Provencia and Avance lenses. Seaview Optical, affordable eye care for everyone. Try the new Vitamult Plus with acai for mental sharpness, guarana for physical energy, and aloe vera for a stronger immune system. Vitamult takes care of you. Centromed Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Centromed Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure, and cholesterol testing. Hi, this is Ian Allen. I'm the sheriff in this song. I run this song on CNC Street, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. That is what you call mashup. We're gonna come, we playing. It's the last thing on our minds for crime. What if you really, really wanna stop crime? Welcome back to Andara Tobago. I'm Hamer Ramstein, and this is the morning where we just have a couple minutes again uh, with Mariano Brown as we continue our discussion about the falling crude oil prices. Uh, Ms. Brown, as we wrap this interview, your closing comments. Now, you're looking at the fact that the energy, the energy minister is obviously going to be monitoring what's taking place because of the fact of the implications on Petrotrin in particular. I understand that there's supposed to be some sort of audit of the assets. Uh, he's bringing in some sort of consultant. Your closing comments on this matter. Um... Petrotrin is a business. It needs to be run as a business. In fact, if, if there's one thing, I think that we need to really look at our position with regard to state enterprises. There are some examples elsewhere in the world where state enterprises have gone on to be world-class enterprises. What we have found is that our state enterprises are mired in all sorts of political issues and corruption, and we really need to separate them out. And Petrotrin is one of those particular entities that we need to do the same thing with and, and, and deal with it as a business case. Right. So we have all these issues about we bring in and expose to do A, B, and C, and so on and so forth. What we really need to do is to run it as a business. Once we run it as a business, a lot of these issues. Why do you think away. that has not, not been able to happen? I can't say it's only happened under this administration, the successive administration. Well, I accept that. I accept that. I, I, th I think that the, the issue is that 
Um, this is something that we have to be. We made some decisions in this in the seventies, right? and I think it's time to review them and have to review the efficacy of that policy because clearly those decisions have not carried us where we want to be, and we've also ended up in situations where we have suboptimum performance, and suboptimum performance is putting it mildly. Right? The reality is that we need to concentrate on business and run it as a business. And even if you appoint people to a board, they must bring certain types of skills and capacities with them, and they must run the company that way. Running a, the state enterprises as though they are profit-making business model. Can, can they do it, and do we have the right people in the right places? And successive administrations have been accused of not getting that, that combination correct. Uh, will we get it correct before it's too late? We take a very short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. This is The Morning Bruce. Stay with us. Dig into the deliciously sophisticated taste of Wendy's with our new smoked Gouda chicken, layered with flavors of caramelized onion sauce and Dijon aioli, all atop a buttery brioche bun. It's time to bring your taste buds to attention with our new smoked Gouda on brioche. Something so Gouda is only around for a limited time. So try one today. Wendy's, now that's better. Available at all locations nationwide. Hello? Hello, DirecTV. You installed a magic box for us and said we could call you if we had any problems. Magic box? <laughs> oh, yeah, DirecTV DVR. <laughs> yeah, sure. How can I help you? He won't move. It sports all day. He rewind in, pause in, watch in slow mos recording everything. Well, that's great. Sounds like he's enjoying it. Not great. When do we get it in? Well, actually, if you like, you can access our advanced program guide from your phone or PC to set your recordings for you and the kids. It is a magic box. <laughs> I guess so. But if you have any further questions, you could try our customer service reps. They're real nice and they could answer just about anything. Okay. Or you could still call me if you'd like. Great. Sign up for DirecTV today and experience the difference. DirecTV, life-changing. Hi, me again. What channel is Wife Swap on? Green Dot Limited, wireless, digital, cable, and internet masters. No phone lines necessary. Quick and easy installation. Unlimited internet access. Call 623-4643 and be part of the Green Dot today. your trendsetter for home decor. Come and see our selection of striking accent furniture, a stunning assortment of outdoor furnishings, and exquisite range of kitchen items at Homeland Furnishings. All your bedroom and bathroom needs are met. The kids will be amazed. Stylish and interesting bars and accessories, plus fabric land, storage land, and array of rugs and more. Homeland Furnishings for the trendiest selection of home furnishings and accessories, located at Piaco Plaza. Centra Med Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Centra Med Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure, and cholesterol testing. Legacy and stability. I'm sure you would agree that these words ring true for those who want to invest in a secure future for their children or even in retirement and desire to yield high returns. At TBLA, we can provide you with prudent investment instruments. So if you're looking for that future you longed for, then visit us at TBLA and find out which investment product is right for you. TBLA, a secure home to invest.
Welcome back to Rundad and Tobago. I'm Hema Ram Kisun and joining us on set now, Reshma Advani, and she's a board member of the shelter. Uh, it is domestic violence, raising awareness against uh, uh, domestic violence and ensuring that you are aware of the warning signs and uh, save yourself before it's too late. Reshma, good morning again. How are you? Morning. How are you? I'm okay. Now, we are doing a campaign. Why are we doing this awareness campaign? Uh, Purple Wings is a campaign that the domestic violence shelter is embarking upon because even though traditionally, internationally, uh, Domestic Violence Month is in October, um, we share that month with breast cancer awareness, which is a very large issue. Um, so hopefully to drive some of the focus towards this, uh, the shelter has embarked upon this Purple Wings campaign um, to really bring it to the forefront and have people... Uh, pay attention a little bit because also the 25th of November is the UN's day for, um, sorry, the UN's recognition of um, the resistance of domestic violence against women. Now, looking at uh, the issues surrounding domestic violence, you know, only last weekend, I believe it was, uh, there was a situation where a young woman decided she was ready to end her relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, she went to make a police report and said, I believe that my life is in danger. And uh, less than six hours after she lost her life, her brother lost his life, and two members of her family are still nursing injuries when her ex-boyfriend uh, came and decided to kind of do what he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Looking at, at women in our country, obviously when you see situations like that, it's not going to reinforce your desire to empower yourself. I understand completely. I think that's why it's important that the communication is out there about what steps you should take and educating people in your lives to recognize those symptoms before it escalates to that point. So first and foremost, 800-SAVE is the number you really want to make sure that you have with you and people know about. That's the emergency contact line that knows exactly how to deal with these specific cases and has the method and means to address the issue right away. Of course, our Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is also an option, but this is something that is going to be focused on this kind of situation. The second is we encourage as many people as possible to go to our website, which is trinidadshelter.com, or to our Facebook page, because there are always uh, little tips uh, stories and people's own experiences that really make you understand the difference between the Trini subculture of don't worry he's just being a man versus what true abuse is because abuse isn't always physical mm -hmm. it can be mental it can be emotional as well now speaking about mental abuse and emotional abuse a lot of women uh, are not aware because you know you think that someone is just lashing out or they're venting uh, how do you really draw that line between uh, okay there is a disagreement to this is a prolonged attack on your your self-worth I think what the key is is when you start to value yourself less than you value the partnership or you start to value your abilities or question yourself more than anything else the walking on eggshells is a great litmus test if you feel like you cannot express your opinion honestly and openly because you're afraid of the possible backlash whether it be verbal or otherwise that's a really good starting point for understanding that perhaps this situation is not the best for you counseling is a huge part of this not everything has to end with a dramatic uh, situation. If you know that there is a potential for that kind of environment and you feel as though you're in a place where you can handle that kind of um, communication, you should be able to reach out and get counseling and encourage your partner to get counseling as well because that's what we do at the shelter. Counseling is a critical part both internal and external of the program that we carry out. Now, when you do the counseling, is it to resolve the issues in that person or is it to restore the relationship? At the end of the day, it's always about the person. Sometimes the relationship simply has run its course or it's simply not healthy for either party for whatever reason. What we serve to do is make sure that the individuals involved, both parties, move forward knowing that this can never happen again. Now, you know, looking at that uh, fact that a relationship does r run its course, uh, how, you know, a lot of people are unable to do that separation part. How then do you know uh, if it is time to leave? I think a lot of people stay for two major reasons, and we discussed this before. Um, it's children and it's financial circumstances. Um, I think one of the biggest keys in terms of knowing when it's time to go 
is understanding when you lose again your sense of self or your ability to make decisions on your own it's important that women empower themselves with education with um, the ability to be self-sufficient and a strong social network is always critical do not make do not allow yourself to become entombed in the other person's life make sure that you connect with family with friends with neighbors and they know what's going on now, if we're looking at uh, the the women themselves and you know the shelter uh, if more than likely when a woman does move uh, from uh, an abusive situation how many how often do you find that abuse moves from the woman to the children and, and other the entire family gets involved in this this sort of crazy situation actually it's the reverse the one usually determining factor with a woman leaving a relationship is when her children are at risk from the time those children are at risk they will move heaven and earth to make sure that they are protected so more often than not at least in the position that we've seen thus far the women are very protective of their children and ensure that their needs are met above all else. So you don't find that it reaches the point where the children are also put in danger as well? Well, I mean, it's according to each situation. They vary so dramatically, and it's according to the person who is perpetuating the abuse. Now, you know, I always say this, and I, um, you don't have to give any names, but a lot of times uh, women will be looking at the, the program, and they somehow know that something is not right, and most people are just not aware of the options, or they don't believe that this can indeed happen to me. I don't know if you can probably share a story uh, of anyone who's probably passed through the shelter and we're not breaching any privacy because of you're not course. calling any names uh, but a lot of times you know people will call after the show and say you know I am in this situation I don't really know if I don't think he's that bad I think he will change he comes back and he says he's gonna change uh, maybe you can share a story just to bring the discussion into context I actually met um, someone that really impacted my life because of how positive she was just to give you an idea we had 96 people in the shelter in the entire of 2013 we've had 112 people so far this year and the year is not up so a lot of people are in that situation that you're discussing maybe he's not that bad maybe it's not so terrible but i think that this particular woman impacted me because she really was without anywhere to turn she had no family uh she really had no money or no formal education to speak of she had two or three kids into all under the age of five um she really had no way out in her mind but when she finally made that decision she was so incredibly strong about it she went back and took courses she did as much as she could to educate herself she did what she could to make sure that um, her children were taken care of and the position that she's in now is that she's working in a professional field it's been 10 years since um what she's was able to provide for her children it's incredible what was the reason that she left and why, why did she decide that i'm going to end this relationship i don't know what the trigger mechanism was but i am pretty sure again that it had something to do with her children now also the road to redemption and and sort of regaining because you know a lot of times we talk about the situations surrounding uh when you're in that but when you leave that situation there is a, a period of of sort of dissonance that you feel a disconnect because you have so for so long associated your identity with this person or this relationship i think that's what purple wings is all about this coming month because we really want people to understand that your identity is not intertwined with this individual we need people to understand particularly those who feel like this is the end of their life their friends are his friends his family is their family um, the separation of the children from the grandparents it's very traumatic you need to understand that this too shall pass as simplified as it sounds because programs like the shelter that continuously work with people and our volunteers who are critical to us to make sure this um, continues to survive are the people who care enough about you to make sure that we get you back on your feet and get you in a place of positivity and reinforcement your closing comments from Dansbury what would you like them to know about the shelter I'd love people to understand that you can volunteer in all walks of life our email address is admin at trinidadshelter.com we invite people to call us at 628-0861 about our volunteering program. Every little bit helps. And even if you think you don't want to get personally involved with a situation, you don't have to. We are always looking for a different tact or a different approach when it comes to working with the shelter and its program upcoming. How, why did you get involved in this program? Hmm. Elizabeth Palmo. <laughs> she is a force to be reckoned with. She is now on our board, I'm happy to say and she is a person who inspires you 
it's very rare that someone gets you so involved in something that's so tantamount anyway to our society survival but she makes it personal she makes it real it's not something you read on a facebook feed or see in a newspaper story anymore she makes you understand that it's possible to give back in a number of ways giving back to our society the numbers are there and if you uh, don't have the time but you can assist in one way or the other go find out about what you can do we take a very short break when we come back we'll have more for you stay with us this is the morning brew thank you wouldn't it be cool if you could control your home with a simple touch turn on your entertainment system and heat up the party with your favorite music or cool things off during those hot summer days. You can even take it with you to turn the lights off when you forget or check on loved ones back home so you know the kids made it home safely. What if you could do all this from multiple devices? Now you can. Try it on you, Vitamult Plus, with a Acai for mental sharpness. Garana for physical energy. And aloe vera for a stronger immune system. Vitamult takes care of you. Are you looking for an innovative way to control and monitor your glucose levels? Join the hundreds of people who have switched to the code-free blood glucose monitoring system. Code-free makes it easy to analyze before and after meal glucose results. It has no coding, making it simple to use. 500 test memory with date and time, a 5-second fast test time with only a small blood sample volume needed. And don't even worry about the strips. Code-free strips are among the most affordable and advanced on the market. Try code-free today by trading in your old glucose machines and get 50% off every code-free machine. Available at Pennywise and all leading pharmacies. Attention healthcare professionals, personal trainers, fitness instructors, nurses, dietitians, recovering cancer care survivors, general public. Come to Trinidad's first ever health and fitness conference and free health fair. Learn about metabolic connection to diabetes and exercise, midlife fitness for adults, nutritional connection to cancer care and prevention, fighting obesity, a practical approach, group fitness instructor, group resistance training, and much more. Contact Institute of Health and Fitness, 492-7397, and your gym. Won the world, will Aero post it. Everything you need, will Aero post it. Shop online and get it delivered. With so many, come to locations. With free island-wide delivery. With daily flights to TNT. Convenience is more than just live service. Christmas can be anything you wish. is Aero Post it. Online shopping made easy. Aero Post it. Aero Post. Chic Leisure Limited, leading manufacturers of vermicelli, split piece powder, greaseproof paper, manufacturers of a variety of paper and plastic bags, bags for french fries, sandwiches, popcorn, supermarket stores and more. Whatever your needs, trust to Chic Leisure Limited for quality products. Faith Community Church presents Prophetic Convention 2014, featuring Prophets Dennis Kramer and Jefferson Edwards, with host pastors Farouk and Saadi Mohammed, from the 3rd to the 7th November, 7 p.m. nightly. For more information, call 653-1587. Central Med Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Central Med Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure, and cholesterol testing. It's a two-day mega scratch and dead sale this Friday and Saturday at Brand Source. Everything at factory prices. Everything must go. Brand Source mega scratch and dead sale this Friday and Saturday. Brand Source number 121 Monroe Road, Kunopia, 693-2421. We're watching every move our leaders make and reporting it all back to you with the most comprehensive local, regional, and international stories seven days a week. CNC3, 7 p.m. news. We're covering your world. As a woman moving in with three guys, I think I know what to expect. Gentlemanly respect. Oh, yeah, there it is. What about these? Sorry. Heart-to-heart -heart talks. The other day, I bought a pair of jeggings. They look like jeans, but they're really leggings. Who cares? Some real big brother advice. Did you shave your legs? I will now. Front and backs? Yeah. Thank you. I expect we're going to get along just fine. New Girl is coming to CNC3.
The wait is over. It wasn't a perfect summer. It was a stupid summer. TV's best comedy five years in a row. Wow. I know, right? And this season... He loves me not. How can they ever top themselves? Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Don't miss the new season of Modern Family, coming soon to CNC3. Breaking Bad, Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m., only on CNC3. Pass it on. Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Ramki Soon, and this is The Morning Brew. Uh, well, as you know, every Wednesday, uh, we have a health segment, and this is uh, Courtesy Insure, and uh, we give you some tips about... Uh, the do's and don'ts of ensuring that you have a healthier life and uh, this one is about running and that's something really close to me because I run a lot. Running is one of the most important exercises that an individual can do in order to lose weight or to be fit or if you do it uh, why I do it is simply to de-stress and when you have a very stressful life you kind of need these things. Uh, jogging or running is a popular form of physical activity. Uh, regular running builds strong bones, improves cardiovascular fitness and helps to maintain a healthy weight. The difference between running and jogging is the intensity and both are forms of exercise so those are some of the benefits there and um, you know uh, congratulations again to all of uh, my hardcore team that made the UE half I didn't run because I had class but uh, definitely kudos to you all we're training for the next marathon don't know if I can make it one either but uh, running or uh, regular jogging offers health benefits it helps you to build uh, strong bones it strengthens muscles it improves cardiovascular fitness uh, it burns plenty of kilojoules if you're looking to lose weight it's the best way actually uh, six ways to make running more fun because uh, if you are uh, always running then you kind of there is the time then you're gonna get like really bored and sometimes we have to change environments so uh, my team and I we definitely change our locations all the time but focus on your surroundings look at your next run as an opportunity to explore a beautiful place reward yourself so rewards can come in all shapes and sizes uh, I tend to go buy a nice outfit if to reward myself of a week of running uh, celebrate your progress remember that it's really about uh, what you thought you couldn't do so every day set a limit uh, you can buy one of those those watches if you have a normal watch just time yourself try to cut or shave uh, 30 seconds or a minute down every single day or every week and to see how best you can improve on your personal time and awesome tunes yeah if you are a runner uh, definitely you need to have uh, music because that is something and hit the races uh, constantly challenge yourself I know the first time that I ran a 5k it took me about 35 minutes to actually complete the course and now I can actually do it in 20 something so uh, can constantly challenge yourself and enter these things that kind of gives you uh, the motivation uh, be but before and that was your health tip today uh, for the uh, balance segment but Akash Samru is standing by Akash is a footballer at a cricket star you see I'm, I'm giving you all your like ratings up this morning start. after actually he says he keep challenging himself you know what I might I, I, chal I challenge it I, I, I want to race you you know you can't I, I you know I'm gonna run circles that's, around that's you not true. you know that right that's not true that's not true hello you we'll cannot it, run we'll with do me. It this Saturday all right and we'll film it too for sure we should show it on the morning brew I know and I'll, wear, I'll wear my medal <laughs> when I come on Monday, I'll just wear my medal and just keep dangling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even even the director's like, right, no, because you know, you know that, you, you know, know I run, right? You don't forget it, so I'm not in the car park. Want <laughs> to finish? Want to finish a show? And I challenge the director too. <laughs> because they're like, because they're telling you that you can't beat me. <laughs> what are we talking about in this morning? Well, I mean, uh, you know, you know, medical students. They, I mean, medical students and. And, and 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 drugs you know you know these things these, these things go hand in hand but uh you know for this one uh, 25 year old who was caught yesterday with some uh, illegal drugs I, I think that might be the end of his uh his, his prospects of becoming a, a doctor 25 year old uh, medical student from San Juan uh, he was held with around uh, two kilograms of marijuana Ew. kilograms of marijuana that's a lot it's about eighty thousand dollars a street value and uh, he was also called um, caught with some other apparatus some paraphernalia uh, with regards to, to growing 
uh, this uh, marijuana and he was a Oh, come on, guy. You're going to be a doctor. You don't need a sideline business. Well, I mean, mean, really. I, I hear it's expensive to, <laughs> to go to medical school. This guy just shows a very illegal <laughs> and uh, unconventional way of uh, funding his uh, tuition. Uh, I mean, is Gate not... Is gate, is I know. I was not going to tell you that Gate offers these yeah, things. Yeah, you know, so they, they cover I mean, the expenses. You know, so I think that might be... That might be it for the, for the, I want to say young man, he's older than me. Uh, <laughs> two kilograms of uh, marijuana uh, held. Also, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm seeing a, a few photos sent to me uh, of some uh, guns uh, being seized as well as, uh, you know, some uh, drugs here. And a head, just a severed head. Uh, I haven't got all the information yet. What do you get on your phone, Akash? All Clearly kinds, you and I don't have all the, the we have same different groups. phones, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to forward this to you. It's a, it's a severed head, so I'm definitely, definitely going to follow up on that, uh, at least to get this for the midday news. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not too pleasant to look at at 7.30 in the morning, but I have a severed head on my uh, cell phone here. Which he just shared with me. Well, I mean, you, you're going to see it in a few minutes <laughs> as well, but uh, yeah, and uh, of course, uh, we will be trying to, you know, keep the uh, story with uh, the missing girls now yeah. uh, from Tobago. Hopefully, a, hopefully, if they're yeah. somewhere around and they see it, they, you know, we, we put enough, we put it out there, and people, you know, we only look out for them. It's two girls from the same form, the same school in Tobago. I know Tobago is a, I mean, Trinidad is small. Tobago is even smaller, but this is a huge coincidence. It is. You know, two girls, same form, same school. The mother of the girl who went missing on Monday said that when she heard of the first girl going missing, she told her daughter, you know, please don't do this to me. And her daughter said, you know, you have nothing to worry about. And uh, no, this girl is missing. It's uh, Chanel and Shalise. Uh, they're missing uh, both, I believe, from Form 2 Mason Hall uh, Secondary School. If anyone is, uh, I mean, if anyone sees them, we will keep uh, their faces in our news headlines and in our midday news today. I you know, know please fam, give us yeah. a call uh, uh, so that we can contact the family and we will be giving out the numbers that you all could call to, to get these girls back home. You know, I, I can just imagine the trauma that this family is going through mm -hmm. and these are young girls, so please, uh, you know, I, you don't want to think the worst. So if anyone knows where they are, please definitely call and no matter the situation, I'm pretty sure that uh, conversation and dialogue is always essential. Akash, thanks so much okay. uh, for the news update there. And yeah, we're going to tell you how Akash loses the race against me a little later. <laughs> uh, but we're switching our focus this morning. And at this time, we're talking about the whole you. And we have two women joining us on set this morning. And they're here to talk a little bit about the whole you. Good morning. Thank you morning. for joining us. Thank you. Now, Maria, let's start with you. Uh, you're a life and executive coach. Now, the whole you. What is the whole you? Well, the whole you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, uh, it's very simple. It's, uh, it's seeing your life from a very holistic perspective. And um, basically, uh, I am going to talk in this um, conference about uh, stress. And, um, but uh, stress related to us uh, 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 um, in the anti-aging business. I am in the anti-aging business. And it happened that two years ago, I was forced to go into this business. Uh, because my sister, who is a doctor, and she is also a plastic surgeon and anti-aging medicine specialist, she came to Trinidad looking for business opportunity. At that time, I was doing my coaching and, and some marketing, and uh, she told me she wanted to open an anti-aging center. And mm -hmm. I say, okay, at that time I say an anti-aging center, I had an idea of what it is, but um, I didn't know exactly. So I was forced to research and to learn about this business in order to establish the business. And what I discover is that uh, it's not really a business, it's a lifestyle. So if you think that um, living anti-aging is to use a cream, an anti-aging cream at night, it, it's not really like that. It's more complex, it's deeper than that, but at the same time, it's very easy. It is just to address several aspects of your life and uh, just ask yourself, today, what I am doing today, to live better within the next 10, year, 10 years, something like that. So, What are you doing to live a better life and a stress-free life? You know, yeah. sometimes uh, we don't understand <laughs> what or who or who, what is contributing to our stress factor. Uh, Jennifer, you know, you've decided this whole you. Uh, yes. that you're a life empowerment and financial coach. What yes, is a I life am. empowerment coach? A life empowerment coach, what I do as coach, coaching is really, it's different from psychology. What coaching does is really with the coach, you partner with the clients that come to you in a more intimate setting, a more relaxed setting. 
you help that client to, besides relaxing, to share what is on their mind, what is really holding them back from achieving their goals. What are their stressors, as Marianne has just said, their stressors, and help them to discuss it and show them how they can, what they can do, the steps that they can take in order to live a better life, a happier life, or a fulfilled life. That's what are some of the major mistakes that people live when attempting to live a happier and more fulfilled life? I would say one is not prioritizing enough. We tend, or people tend to look at the, the, the stressors mainly is the hustling to work, getting up, especially referring to women, you know, all the different juggling, the different activities you have to do before you leave home. So they pay a lot of attention. Of, can I complete what I'm doing in time to, the traffic is there, to get to office in time, and when you get to office, you're worried about whether you can complete the task ahead of you, whether you're gonna be promoted, what is happening. That work life, um, struggling with work life, with relationships, but I don't do the aspect with relationship, <laughs> I more concentrate about, are you fulfilling your, your aspirations and your dreams, and is to help you fulfill that. Marilla, what do you want people to take away from this uh, event? Well, the first thing is to realize um, what is the state they are in right now. Mm. I mean, what is going on in my life? Because this is like, uh, it's a realization process. Until you don't realize what are you doing right now, um, how it is, um, how you are working on your goals uh, and, and your activities, and how they are affecting you, because it happened that I may be doing something that I love. But at the same time, this something that I love is stressing me so much that is damaging my health, that is really disturbing me. So at that point, I need to reevaluate. So the first thing that I think uh, we need to address is, what is your position right now? Your closing comments from Madam Speaker, why should they attend this? And this is about oh, women, right? Oh, yes. yes. This yes. one so is about women. This is only for women. <laughs> this one is about why should they attend? To help them really achieve their goals, to help them live a happier life, a stress-free life. There is an aspect about health and how you different going through your different hormonal situations, how it can affect you. And they're going to learn so much. Not uh, what they're going to learn when they come. And it's not so much learning, it's a lot of sharing. It's sharing insights into different aspects of your life and to help you go out there and be happy and really live a fulfilled life. Happiness is truly a quest that we all, uh, it's really a lifelong journey that most people have embarked on. And uh, if you find it, then good for you at the end of your life. Yes. Uh, it's taking place at the Courtyard uh, Marriott Port of Spain. And uh, definitely go find out. The information is at the bottom of the screen there. And it's taking place on the 1st of November. Uh, so go definitely check it out. And it's uh, only for the ladies. So if you feel as though there's something uh, that's a hindrance or a challenge for you realizing your full potential or the true happiness that lies within, then maybe you'd need a life coach to tell you how to bring it out. Stay with us. This is the Morning Brew. Thank you. Sides invites all shrimp lovers to enjoy the mouth-watering shrimp dishes. New on the menu, dal, rice, and curry shrimp. Go ahead. Ask about our new tamarind sauce. Horse Sides Roti Shop, Trinidad's premier roti shop, Arima, Tuna Puna, Sawa, for the Spain. Suffering from back and spinal problems and don't know what's causing it? Get a spinal scan done at the Spinal Institute of Trinidad and Tobago. Computerized spinal examinations can now be done via a service electromyograph or SEMG scan. This scan would show the specific areas and degree of subluxation and the direction of imbalance in the vertebral column. These specific readings make treatment more accurate and effective. Call today at 665-5433. The Spinal Institute of Trinidad and Tobago. Taking care of your spinal needs. Oh, hi. Can you match this? Sure. Fern green. If I wanted an accent wall. Fern green. Okay, what about the trim? 
Fern green. Fern green. Oh. Anyone can scan a color, but our color experts have the knowledge, expertise, and over 3,300 Benjamin Moore colors to take your project beyond your wildest dreams. For color and so much more, go to a Benjamin Moore store. Caribbean Airlines Invaders Steel Orchestra presents Pan, Parang, and Pork with performances by Cal Invaders, Los Alumnos de San Juan, Invaders Youth Steel Orchestra, Ken Professor Fillmore, Marcia Miranda, and Scarunta. Sunday 9th, November 2014, QPCC Car Park, Elizabeth Street, Woodbrook, 5.30 p.m. to midnight. Admission, $300. Food is inclusive. Pork and non-pork tickets are available. Centromed Pharmacy, your one-stop shop for all your medical needs and more. Centromed Pharmacy also presents its third annual health fair on the 1st of November 2014 at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free blood glucose, pressure, and cholesterol testing. Doctor, is it true that my child needs DHA? Yes, it is. 70 milligrams per day. Does milk have DHA? Very little. He could drink all these glasses and it still wouldn't be enough. I recommend Enfagro. Each glass contains 25% of the DHA recommended by experts. And DHA favors mental development, concentration, memory, and learning. Hey, what's that? DHA. Very good. Enfagro, nutrition tailored for toddlers. <laughs> Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Hema Rampton. This is the morning with Trinidad and Tobago Music Festival Association presents the Mini Youth Festival. And Chantal joins us on set this morning. Uh, Mini Youth Festival 2015. What's a Mini Youth Festival? Well, it's different from the National Youth, the National Music Festival in that we are just having regional festivals this year and we're focusing on the young people because the National Festival has been absent from our calendar for quite some time. So we have decided as an organization to have many festivals to put the festival back in people's minds and also to ensure that the young people who have not had an opportunity to perform within recent years, that they get that. They get the opportunity to prepare for festival. They also get the opportunity to have festival kudos on their resume, so to speak. Now, festival kudos, now you talk about that. And I wanted to ask a little bit, what is the benefit of having this on your CV if you are uh, in the, the, the creative industry or, or, or hoping to pursue this as a possible career option? Well, it is, it is not simply enough to just be doing exams and or practicing only. It is essential as an artist to interact with others and that is what classes like the choir classes and ensemble classes, we do have steel band ensemble classes and piano classes and so on. It is important to be able to perform with others and to also prepare yourself to perform for an audience. Now prepare for it, to uh, perform for an audience and it's taking place at Queen's Hall. Registration is taking place all now. Now, yes. A festival is something you have to definitely prepare for both as an artist and as an organizer. So the young people are open to visit and, and not just the young people. It is important that the teachers and uh, instructors, private instructors be a part of this process. So. Someone asked, you know, if students could individually come and enter, but most of the time it is something that is instituted or ac activated or effected by the private instructors and the music teachers. So those students and particularly teachers who have students who they know they'd like to push, the registration is taking place at 8 Serpentine Road now and it ends on November 30th. And when you get a registration, there's a list of all the classes, the syllabus you can get from us uh, from the email that's listed on the screen. So you can check the syllabus, see what you'd like to, 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 in, to inquire about at the office. So 8 Serpentine Road, the music is there, 
You can register there, you can get the music, and you have time to prepare for the festival, for the mini secondary schools festival, which takes place in March. Preparing for the mini secondary school festival, and uh, definitely it's gonna be sort of a training ground. You're gonna see new faces and the next generation of performers in Trinidad and Tobago. We now take a very short break. Your closing comments to Trinidad and Tobago. To those parents who are looking this morning, or to even those students, what would you want them to know about this event? I would like you to remember that this event has been in place in Trinidad and Tobago for 60 years and that many of our musicians and artists in Calypso, Soca, classical music, jazz music have passed through this and it is important to our national landscape to have this cultural event. So do participate and when it's on, come and support it. Definitely come out and support. We take a very short break from Dad and Tobago. When we come back, we'll have our final interview for this morning. This is The Morning Brew. Stay with us. I'm Eliza Dooley. I wasn't always this fab. I used to be butt ugly, but I blew out my curls and pushed up the girls, traded likes for likes, and I was insta-famous. <laughs> My coworkers like love me. Got the upgrade, sluts. Don't be jelly, Linda. <gasps> and I just hooked up with this really hot guy from work who just happens to be married, isn't he? She hasn't picked up on that yet. She... OMG. I think I'm gonna hurl. <gasps> Wait, pause. Did that seriously just happen? <laughs> Hashtag mortified. <laughs> Selfie is coming to CNC3. Rubbish fire, but let's keep it in check. You heard him. Let's move. Can't hear you out here. Mayday emergency! Mayday emergency! Anyone from the house is beware of fire! Watch Chicago Fire Season 3, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. only on CNC3. Look out every weekday. Every weekday. On Crime Watch, you can now double your winnings. Double your winnings. In the Guardian Crime Watch Lucky Key promotion. promotion. Look for your lucky key at the back of the Guardian each day. Each day Watch each day. Crime Watch at 6 p.m. on CNT3 to find out if you have the lucky key. You now have a chance to double your, double winnings. your winnings. Remember to buy your Guardian and watch Crime Watch at 6 p.m. on CNT3 to find out if you have the lucky key for a chance to double your, double winnings. your winnings. Exclusively on Crime Watch on CNT3. See the Guardian for details. 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 Hi, this is Ian Allen. I'm the sheriff in this song. I run this song on CNC3, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mondays to Friday. That is what you call mashup. We're gonna come, we playing. It's the last thing on our minds for crime. What if you really, really wanna stop crime? This is Ariana Grande. It's Ed Sheeran. This is Usher. I'm Nicki Minaj. This is Eric Church. Hey, this is Lord. Yeah, yeah. Motley Crue. This is Iggy Azalea. Coldplay. Paramore. We are trained. I'm Steve Aoki. This is Calvin Harris. iHeartRadio. Radio. Mm -hmm. Radio Music Festival is exclusively on CNC3 this December. Hi, this is Ian Allen. I'm the sheriff in this song. I run this song on CNC3, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mondays to Friday. That is what you call mashup. We're gonna come, we ain't playing. It's the last thing on our minds for crime. What if you really, really want to stop crime? I would like to be a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, a farmer. Minister. Dreams can come true. Whatever your child wants to become, it's possible through education. But before your child can read to learn, he or she must learn to read. JJ and Friends Phonics Fast Forward. Learn to read now. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome back. And joining us on set, we have Dillian, we have Christine and Candice, and we're talking about a micro 
uh, well, it's really a grand flea market, and all of these entrepreneurs have come together to showcase what they have, and it's taking place at uh, the Point Lee, at the uh, Gardens Community Center, and all of the numbers are, take, are at the bottom of the screen. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Now, you know, looking at, at this event and this flea market, what is, what is the flea market exactly? Is it simply, how is it different to any other flea market? Okay, basically, what this flea market, what makes it different is a whole group of micro-entrepreneurs that are coming together to showcase your talents, your skills, and also to what we want to do. We want whole of Trinidad and Tobago to be exposed to the stuff that we are doing. Now, micro-entrepreneurs uh, coming together. So what are some of the things that we're going to see featured at the event? Okay. Well, basically, we are, I know we have a number of things on, on yes. the, the set this morning. Right. So we have persons from the agro-processing field, which involves, as you can see on the set, which will be like jams, jellies, coachellas, pepper sauce, etc. Then we have persons who make quilts. Then we have persons who have been doing some sort of craft. Um, crochet, all those stuff and different things, stuffed toys and all those things. Those persons who are involved in making local wines as well, we have those persons. So it's a whole host of things that we can expect from these persons. Uh, is this the first time you're having this event? Oh yes, it's of my first event. And is it a, lot, a, is it a female, uh, all female? Uh, well, well, I know we have only females this morning. The majority it is female. Now, uh, Candice, what are you hoping to see come out of this? What, which one are your, which uh, items are yours? My products are the pepper sauces, the kachilas, the spicy salsa dip, and we also have a pepper chance. Why did you decide to, to join on to this? Because I want to see where this could go. I want the, the, I want the public to be able to experience what Candy Hearts Electability Lights is all about. It's more than just a pepper sauce because we have no artificial flavoring, artificial texture or thickening agents. Mm -hmm. So it's more natural, homemade products. Definitely homemade. Now, uh, Christine, you are the owner of GNC Baby. So yeah. I see that you have a number of quilts this morning. Yeah, Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. You do not find these quilts in any stores. Mm -hmm. And it's just used to be marketed for micro entrepreneurs. People do not know much about us. So we felt coming together as one group and be able to show this, it will be telling the world what ability we have. So if they can come out to the flea market, they would be seeing this stuff. We even have these little snugglies where for your little ones, mm -hmm. where you just right. snuggle it to your side. And as I said, it's not in the store. So they need to come to the flea market so they can see our stuff. Your closing comments, Trinidad and Tobago. So my closing comments, we'd like all to come and support us because, as we said, we are micro, we are new, and it's something innovative. So we want persons to be encouraged to come along to support us, to get us, because all of us, we want to get out from the stage of being micro entrepreneurs and in extend to being entrepreneurs itself, so having a successful business. And by day coming out, it will help us. Looking at uh, what's taking place, so there's a variety of stuff and all of uh, the information, the telephone calls, if you need to, I, I, are you completely full? Do you have space for any more oh, exhibitors? Yes, that is what I wanted to mention. We still have uh, one or two tables available, so persons who are interested, who want to showcase themselves, who want to get this type of exposure, can contact me. Definitely go contact them, and uh, it's uh, it's the first of its kind, and these women are hoping to begin something great in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, we've come to the end of the morning, Brew, on behalf of everyone attached to the show. I wish you a safe and blessed day, Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, whatever you're doing, remember, our something to think about this morning was keep smiling. Make sure that no one takes away your sunshine today, so whatever you're doing, just keep smiling and find your happiness no matter where it lies. Bye. The Morning Brew was brought to you in part by Wendy's.
dreams can come true. Whatever your child wants to become, it's possible through education. But before your child can read to learn, he or she must learn to read. JJ and Friends Phonics Fast Forward. Learn to read now. Every Thursday, only on CNC3. The wait is over. It wasn't a perfect summer. It was a stupid summer. TV's best comedy five years in a row. Wow. I know, right? And this season... He loves me not. How can they ever top themselves? Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Don't miss the new season of Modern Family, coming soon to CNC3. CNC3. Good morning, I am Akash Samaru with your news headlines on CNC3 and at the TBC Radio Network. Another teenage girl has gone missing in Tobago. 14-year-old Chanel Forbes, a Form 2 student of the Mason Hall Secondary School, was last seen on Monday morning. Her mother, Denise Tobias, says her daughter does not usually go out, and she is aware of the friends her daughter keeps. Ms. Tobias tells CNC3 of the last interaction she had with Chanel before she went missing. Everything was going good as normal. We had a good weekend. Sunday night, everybody was jolly. You know, Monday morning, I wake up as usual, 5.30. She gets up, she bathes. Change her clothes. When she finished put on she clothes, she called me and tell me, Mom, it's 623. I'm leaving now. Mm -hmm. I asked her, was there something for me? She did it. When she left, I told her, I said, push me down, you're going out. She was in her full uniform, her hair was in one. And that was the last mm -hmm. I from her. Police say they have no leads yet and are now probing her disappearance in addition to the disappearance of 12-year-old Shalise de Gale, who was also missing and is also a Form 2 student from the same school. Anyone with information is asked to call 289-1315 or 332 5417. Former Trinidad and Tobago Athletics star Otto Bolden is preparing to take legal action against an Australian newspaper following the publication of an article that alleges an extramarital affair involving him and an Australian senator. The Northern Territory News of Australia alleged that Senator Nova Paris used the taxpayers' funds to pay for Bolden to travel to Australia to continue the affair. But Bolden issued a statement saying the article included gross fabrications. He says, quote, Nova Paris is a former training partner of mine and has been a friend for almost 20 years. My last trip to Australia almost five years ago was for the purpose of holding several youth clinics and it was a successful undertaking. The trip was co-organized by one of my now deceased colleagues at Athletics Australia. The article recently written by the Northern Territory News includes curse fabrications, end quote. In other news, Petrotrin says operations at Trin have resumed after its marine base facility was deemed safe following reports of a gas leak on Monday. On Monday, workers evacuated the compound after reportedly smelling a foul scent. Petrotrin says air quality tests were conducted on Monday and Tuesday and it was found that the atmosphere was within the recommended industry standard. Petrogen adds that it showed a zero reading and no indication of odors. It says operations have resumed as of today. And internationally, at least 10 people are dead and hundreds are missing following a landslide in central Sri Lanka. The landslide, which came after heavy monsoon rains, engulfed about 140 houses in Badula district. Security forces have been mobilized in search and rescue operations. Mudslide warnings were issued after much of Sri Lanka was lashed by heavy rain in the past few weeks. Well, stay tuned. Another news update comes up at the top of the hour right here on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network.
watching CNC3. The views and opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of CNC3. Transformation. Deliverance. Determination. Success. Spiritual SOS. What is going to convince God are not words. God has heard many words already. What is going to convince God are not words. What is going to convince God is faith manifested. It is faith materialized. It is